Sir! We're here to play anime court. <laughs> yeah, this should be interesting because I'm going into this blind. I mean, I'm going into this semi-blind. I kind of know the overall things, but I am terrible at these games. So I brought him, and we're going to see what happens. <laughs> yeah, this should be interesting. <laughs> this should be fun. Welcome to court, the greatest court. Ace Attorney. Oh, hold on. What are these? Justice ah, for you can All. Just... Trials and Tribulations. Okay. Should probably pick the first game. Yeah. Well, duh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Phoenix Wright, Ace Attorney. Episode 1, the first turnabout. This does look, look very anime, yes. As I said, <laughs> anime court. Play, the first tur turnabout. What do you think? Should we play it? Yeah, know, that sounds like a good idea. All right. I am not sure who, what to do here, so... I think this is Ooh. the guy that murdered. Ooh. Damn it! Why me? I can't get caught. Not like this! I've got to find someone to pin this on! Someone like... him. I'll make it look like he did it. August 3rd, 947 AM, District Court, Defendant Lobby, number two. This is two days after my birthday. <laughs> Damn it! We missed my birthday. <laughs> okay, I think it's enter. Boy, am I nervous. Obviously, Phoenix main character. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Okay, I'm not sure how to make her sound, but I guess it's a woman because it's Mia. Mia, right. she's an older woman. She okay, is right. A, she is Phoenix's mentor. Okay, but I'm not good at women voice, but I'm gonna try it, and I'm gonna be like a right. Uh, she does not look that old. <laughs> I should, said she's his mentor. Yeah. I never. I think she's late twenties. Oh, yeah, that's not over hiya, there. Chief! Phew, I'm glad I made it on time. Well, I have to say, Phoenix, I'm impressed. Not everyone takes on a murder trial right off the bat like this. It says a lot about you, and your client as well. Um, uh, thanks. Actually, it's because I owe him a favor. A favor? You mean, you knew the defendant before this case? Yes. Actually, I kind of owe my current job to him. He's one of the reasons I became an attorney. Well, that's news to me. I want to help him out any way I can. I just really want to help him. I owe him that much. Okay, that's your business. This is... this is the client. Oh. It's over! <laughs> My life! Everything! It's all over! Is that your client screaming over there? Yeah, it's him. <laughs> Death! Despair! Ah! He's a bit dramatic. <laughs> I can tell. I'm gonna do it! I'm gonna die! It sounds like he wants to die. Um, yeah. <sighs> Nick! Oh my god, those eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Told you, anime court. Hey, uh, hey there, Larry. Dude, I'm so guilty. Tell them I'm guilty. Give me the death sentence. I ain't afraid to die. What? <laughs> What's wrong, Larry? Oh, it's all over. I'm I'm finished. Finished. I can't live in a world without her. I can't. Who, who took her away from me, Nick? Who did this? Oh, Nick, you gotta tell me who took my baby away. <laughs> oh my uh, God, this is uh, getting weird. Huh. <laughs> The person responsible for your girlfriend's death. Hmm. 
the newspaper says uh, you. <laughs> My name is Phoenix Wright. Here's the story. My friend is crazy. He thinks he's a murderer, and he never did jack shit. <laughs> <laughs> My first case is a fairly simple one. A young woman was killed in her apartment. The guy they arrested was the unlucky sap dating her. Aw, oh, poor Larry. Yeah. Larry Butts. My best friend since grade school. Oh no. Our school had saying, when something smells, it's usually the butts. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, that's not good for him. <laughs> Larry's great. In the 23 years I've known him, it's usually been true. He has a knack for getting himself into trouble. One thing I can say though, it's usually not his fault. He just has terrible luck. But I know better than anyone that he's a good guy at heart. That, and I own one, which is why I took the case, to clear his name. And that's just what I'm gonna do. August 3rd, 10 a.m., District Court, courtroom number two. Who can I be the judge? Court is now in session for the trial of Mr. Larry Butts. Hmm, you know, I saw some of our T games of this and I think his goofy was better for the ah, judge. That's like a, it's like a goofy judge. No, in, just, it, that's how RT did it. You do it how yeah. you want. The gruff voice actually fits, but his just was hilarious. <laughs> I think I'll do with the gruff voice because I like to get that going with this like older looking judge, basically. Yeah, he's definitely older. He's kind of weird though. And I suppose that's the uh, what, what are they called? Uh, the, this is the prosecution, so you're yeah, always okay. you're always the prosecution. Okay. No matter who they the are. The prosecution is ready, Your Honor. The um defense is ready, Your Honor. <clears throat> Mr. Wright, this is your first trial, is it not? Yes, Your Honor. I'm um a little nervous. <laughs> your conduct during this trial will decide the fate of your client. Murder is a serious charge. For your client's sake, I hope you can control your nerves. Thanks. Thank you, Your Honor. Mr. Wright, given the circumstances, I think we should have a test to ascertain your readiness. Yes, Your Honor. <laughs> okay, I can't really do anything here, except... <gasps> I gulp? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> the test will consist of a few simple questions. Answer them clearly and concisely. Because this is, of course, what you do in the murder trial. Oh, yeah, obviously. Please state the name of the defendant in this case. Nah, oh, shit! I think I'm defending myself. Yeah, obviously it's not. The defendant? Well, that's Larry Butts, Your Honor. Correct. Just keep your wits about you, and you'll do fine. Next question. This is a murder trial. Tell me, what's the victim's name? Phew, I know this one. Glad I read the case report cover to cover so many times. It's... wait, uh-oh. <gasps> no, no way. I forgot! I'm drawing a total blank <laughs> here! Did they even mention her name? Nope, they didn't. <laughs> Phoenix, are you absolutely sure you're up for this? No. Up to this? You don't even know the victim's name? <laughs> the look on her face, like, the yeah, fuck, she's man? just shocked. She's just shocked. Oh, the victim. Oh, the victim. Hey, that's me. That's Phoenix. Yeah, sorry. Shut up. <laughs> oh, the victim. Of course, I know the victim's name. I um just forgot temporarily. <laughs> yeah, temporarily. I think I feel a migraine coming on. I agree. Yeah. Look, the victim's name is listed in the court record. Just press tab to check it anytime, okay? What is this tab you speak of, Mia? <laughs> That's a good question. Remember, check it often. Do it for me, please. I'm begging you. Mr. Wright, who is the victim in this case? The victim is... Cindy. 
Oh, Cindy. I'm like, yeah. can I open this? No. Uh, backspace. Cinder block. <laughs> <laughs> it is Cindy Stone. Um, the victim's name is Cindy Stone. Correct. Now tell me, what was the cause of death? Oh shit, I didn't look. Blunt force trauma. Uh, loss of blood due to blunt force oh. trauma. Yeah. Get it right, man. She died because she was... Strangled. Poisoned. Nah. Beaten in the face. She was struck once by a blunt object. Correct. You've answered all my questions. I see no reason why we shouldn't proceed. I do. Why did we do this before the case began? <laughs> you seem much more relaxed, Mr. Wright. Good for you. Thank you, Your Honor. <laughs> I don't feel relaxed, that's for sure. Well then. First, a question for the prosecution. Mr. Payne? Yes, Your Honor. As Mr. Wright just told us, the victim was struck with a blunt object. Would you explain to the court just what that object was? The murder weapon was this statue of the finger. It was found lying on the floor next to the victim. I see. The court accepts in it into evidence. That shot into the court record. It's rather heavy. Yeah. Right. Be sure to pay attention to any evidence added during the trial. That evidence is the only ammunition you have in court. Use tab to check the court record frequently. Mr. Payne, the prosecution may call its first witness. The prosecution calls the defendant Mr. Butts to the stand. Oh, great. Um, Chief, oh, what do I do now? Pay attention. You don't want to miss any information that might help your client's case. You'll get your chance to respond to the prosecution later, so be ready. Let's just hope he doesn't say anything unfortunate. Uh-oh. <laughs> Larry gets excited easily. This could be bad. Ahem. <clears throat> Mr. Butts, is it not true that the victim had recently dumped you? Hey, watch it, buddy! We oh were great together! We were Romeo and Juliet, Cleopatra, and Mark Anthony! Oh my god. Um, oh no. Didn't they all die? <laughs> yep, they all died. I wasn't done, she just wasn't taking my phone calls or seeing me. Ever. What's it to you, anyways? Mr. Butts, what. what you describe is generally what we mean by dumb. <laughs> He's great. In fact, she had completely abandoned you and was seeing other men. Bitch! She had just returned from overseas with one of them the day before the murder. <laughs> what do you mean, one of them? Lies! All of it lies! I don't believe a word of it! Your Honor, the victim's passport. According to this, she was in Paris until the day before she died. Apparently she was in Paris. Ooh. Oh, she returned on Thursday. <laughs> the day before the murder. Oh, no. Oh, I'm misreading the dates. I thought that was 630. <laughs> <laughs> hmm, indeed. She appears to have returned the day before the murder. Dude, no way. The victim was a model, but did not have a large income. It appears that she had several sugar daddies. Daddies? Sugar? Yes, all the men who gave her money and gifts. She took their money and used it to support her lifestyle. Dude! No! <laughs> we can clearly see what kind of woman this Mrs. Stone was. Tell me, Mr. Butts, what do you think of her now? Right. I don't think you want him to answer that question. 
Yeah, Larry has a way of running his mouth in all the wrong directions. Should I... <laughs> Dude, shut up. <laughs> My client had no idea the victim was seeing other men. That question is irrelevant to this case. <laughs> Dude! <laughs> that sound effect of yours. <laughs> Dude, Nick, what do you mean irrelevant? That cheating she dog! Shut up, butts. I'm gonna die! I'm just gonna drop dead! Yeah! And when I meet her in the afterlife, I'm going to get to the bottom of this! Let's continue with the trials, shall we? Your Honor, I'd like to strike his last, like, sentence off the record. Or <laughs> last, like, five sentences off the record. <laughs> I believe the accused motive is clear to everyone. Yes, quite. Oh boy, this is so not looking good. Next question. You went to the victim's apartment on the day of the murder, did you not? Gulp? <laughs> I can't do a gulp. Well, did you or did you not? <laughs> well, maybe I did, and maybe I didn't. <laughs> oh my god. Uh-oh, he went. <laughs> this idiot. What do I do? He has to answer on this. Um, that would be relevant to the case, so I can't say it's irrelevant. Yeah. So I can't really stop him, so... I know. I'll send him a signal. Wait, what? Did I say... Just honestly do it? <laughs> Tell. <laughs> the <truth>. Tell. <laughs> er, yeah, yeah, I was there. I went. Order! Well, Mr. Butts. Dude, chill. She wasn't home, man, so, like, I didn't see her. Oh my god, that voice. Your Honor, the defendant is lying. Lying? The prosecution would like to call a witness who can prove Mr. Butts is lying. Well, that simplifies matters. Who is your witness? The man who found the victim's body. Just before making the gruesome discovery. He saw the defendant fleeing the scene of the crime. Order! Order in the court! Mr. Payne, the prosecution may call its witness. Yes, Your Honor. <laughs> this is bad. On the day of the murder, my witness was selling newspapers at the victim's building. Please bring Mr. Frank Sowitz to the stand. Oh my god. Mr. Sowitz, you sell newspapers subscriptions, is this correct? Oh, oh yes, newspapers, yes! Mr. Sowitz, you may proceed with your testimony. Please tell the court what you saw on the day of the murder. Witnesses account. Okay. I was going door to door, selling subscriptions when I saw a man fleeing an apartment. I thought he must be in a hurry because he left the door half open behind him. Thinking it strange, I looked inside the apartment. Then I saw her lying there. A woman, not moving. Dead. I quailed in, f in f fright and found myself unable to go inside. I thought to call the police immediately. However, the phone in her apartment wasn't working. I went to a nearby park and found a public phone. I remember the time exactly. It was 1 p.m. The man who ran was, without a doubt, the defendant sitting right over there. Hmm. Larry, why didn't you tell the truth? 
I can't defend you against a testimony like that. I already saw one discrepancy in it. Incidentally, why wasn't the phone in the victim's apartment working? Your Honor, at the time of the, at the murder, there was a blackout in the building. Aren't phones supposed to be work doing a blackout? Yes, Your Honor. However, some cordless phones do not function normally. The phone that Mr. Sawitz used was one of those. Your Honor, I have a record of the blackout for your per... per perusal? Perusal. 6 p.m. at the day of the crime. Noon to 6 p.m. on the day of the crime. Hmm. Now, Mr. Wright. Yes, er, yes, Your Honor? You may begin your cross-examination. Cross-examination, Your Honor? I might be a trained uh, attorney at law, but uh, I have no idea what that means. <laughs> All right, right. This is it. The real deal. Uh, what exactly am I supposed to do? Why, you exposed the lies in the testimony the witness just gave. Lies? What? He was lying? Your, your client is innocent, right? Then that witness must have lied in his testimony. Or is your client really guilty? <gasps> How do I prove he's not? You hold the key. It's in the evidence. Compare the witness's testimony to the evidence at hand. There's bound to be a contradiction in, in there. First, find contradictions between the court record and the witness's testimony. Then, once you've found the contradicting evidence, present it and rub it in the wit witness's face! <laughs> um, okay. Open the court record with tab, then point out the contradictions in the testimony. Okay. I was going door to door. You don't have to repeat this. Okay. okay. Because I might go through these a lot in the future. That's so, if I press them, isn't a man leaving an apartment a common sight? I find it odd you would take notice of him. Uh, huh. I, I don't know. He just seems strange to me. That's all. Like he was mad and yet frightened at the same time. Just like... A criminal fleeing the scene of a crime. The defense requests that the witness refrain, refrain from conjecture. Of course. What the witness means is that the man he saw looked suspicious. So what happened next? Half open, you say? Yes, yes. The door was open halfway, yes. I watched for a moment, but no one came to close the door. That's odd. In a big city like this, I thought. I see. And what happened next? Looked inside the apartment. What gave you the idea to do that? Well, the door was half open, you see. Isn't only humans who want to peek? We climb mountains because they are there. It's the same thing. Sure words have never been spoken. Anyone would look inside. I kind of agree with him on this one. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Why did pain come off so quickly? So you looked into the apartment. What happened then? A woman dead. <laughs> Are you sure she was dead? Well, no, I guess I wasn't. But she wasn't moving at all, and there was blood everywhere. I guess that would look like... Look... Blah, blah. I guess that would look fatal to anyone. Very well. What happened next? So you didn't touch anything in the apartment. Um, yes, I mean, no, no, nothing. Okay, what happened next? Hi. 
you thought to call the police, does that mean you didn't actually call them? Please, please. Listen to the rest of the testimony. No. You thought to call the police. What happened next? Phone in her apartment wasn't working. The phone in her apartment wasn't working. Yes, I mean, no. No, it wasn't. Right. But you said you didn't go into the apartment. Or did you? Uh, uh, oh, that? I, I can explain that. There was a cordless phone on a shelf in the entranceway. I reached inside and tried using, the, using that to call. And that phone wasn't working, correct? What happened next? Nearby park and found a public phone. Why use a public phone? Well, you see, I don't have a cell phone. And being the middle of the afternoon, there was no answer at the nearby apartment. Ah, right. What time did you call again? 1 p.m. 1 p.m.? Are you certain? Yes, absolutely. 1 p.m.? Right. Does that seem strange to you? Present some evidence to contradict him. Oh. Yeah. Time of death. Yeah, five. okay. Yeah. <laughs> you found the body at 1 p.m. You're sure? Yes, it was 1 p.m. for certain. Frankly, I find that hard to believe. Your statement directly contradicts the autopsy report. The autopsy notes the time of death at sometime after 4 p.m. There was nobody to, or no body to find out 1 p.m. Oh my god. <laughs> uh. Your Honor, I request that you arrest Phoenix Wright for that terrible joke. Pun? <laughs> How do you explain this three hour gap? <laughs> oh, it's that. Oh, uh. This is trivial. The witness merely forgot the time. After his testimony, I find it hard to believe. Mr. Sowitz, why were you so certain that you found the body at 1 p.m.? I, uh, well, I, gee, that's a really good question. Great job, right? Way to put him on the spot. That's all you have to do. Point out the contradictions. Lies always beget more lies. See through one, and the whole story falls apart. Wait, I remember now. Would you care to give your testimony again? Well, we'll save okay. his testimony for the next episode. <laughs> <laughs> Be back soon. <laughs>